All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to uh, Faith and Victory Church Online, or tonight, DGN, Doing This Generation. Uh, we had to, um, there's something more going on quirky with pages, and um, so we have, um, but we were able to get on our Dunamis Generation page and broadcast, so we're going to broadcast from there tonight, and um, I don't have anywhere I can share for some reason, um, but anyway, I'm not sure why we can't share it, but it's out there. Hallelujah. Shannon's coming to share. All right. Well, welcome, everybody. And, um, you know, I've, I apologize. This is an ongoing issue now, and I'm not sure what all the problems are. I don't want to get conspiracy theorists, uh, but the devil's in the woodwork somewhere. Hallelujah. And um, so uh, hopefully you have found us over here on DGN by now and um, are able to um, – see the service praise the lord glory to god uh we are beginning our prayer service next tuesday night um at uh we're, then we're going to start tuesday at seven we may adjust this as we as we kind of get everybody together um um we may look at some different things earlier we may look at some things like um um tying on to the wednesday night service we, we've got all kinds of options, but we're going to start with Tuesday at 7 and see how that works and um, and then look at some other things. It may be we go for early morning service, um, depending on who wants to, who can come and that kind of we're just We're just going to play with it if we think we need to. But um, just kind of, you know, this may not necessarily be in granite on Tuesday at 7, but that's where we're starting at, praise the Lord. So that's next Tuesday. I um, also want to invite you to join us. Uh, on Sundays in person, uh, we are we are currently meeting at uh, New Life Family Church on Sunday afternoons at twelve thirty. Uh, pa Pastor Bob Pavlak and, and their church family have been gracious and opened their church to us uh, for us to have a place to meet uh, during this time where, where our normal meeting place is closed and can, remains closed. And so um, <clears throat> we're um, we're grateful to their congregation and their uh, ministry for allowing us to use the church, and it's been a blessing. So. Join us this Sunday at 1230 uh, for live and in person at 6701 Ken Coy Road, Jamestown, North Carolina. That is the uh, so Jamestown mailing address, though it's physically high point. Um, they're on the Jamestown mail uh, route district. Praise the Lord. So just off of Business 85 and um, MLK Kivett Road, that MLK Kivett Road uh, changeover. Uh, it was right there off of Harvey. And uh, we'd love to have you come out and be with us in person. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We talked uh, last week. We started because we were going to talk about moving into prayer and um, having um, beginning prayer. We, we uh, haven't been able to really do that in the past because of the, um, uh, the situation where we didn't have our own place. We were, we were really in a community center. There wasn't a place for us to really come and pray. Um, we weren't doing virtual. Uh, that that's kind of something that's kind of come up this past year. Uh, thought we would be back in person every service before now, but it's obvious we still aren't there yet. <clears throat> Although we are being at least once a week in person, which is awesome. But just seemed impressed upon me, and uh, as my brother Hagen used to say, seemed good to me and the Holy Ghost uh, for us to get to some things in prayer. There's some things that we're just going to have to be involved in and and um, seeing the church grow, seeing the church go forward seeing the finances come in, getting our own building and all these things uh, that that's going to require prayer. And so we wanted to um, uh, get in, get us together and we're going to be using zoom as our format um, after uh, kind of analyze the things we're using zoom and zoom is going to be our platform. And um, what we want you to do, if you want to be involved in our Tuesday night prayer, uh, email me your email address um, and we will we will send you out an invitation each week, and then all you got to just click on the link and go right into the meeting. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> so last week we began talking about prayer, and uh, we obviously started in um, Acts chapter one. They were in one accord in uh, prayer and supplication, and then we talked in Acts chapter two. Um, you know that um, they were praying and went up to the temple, and um, Peter and John went to the temple in Acts chapter three. To, in the hour of prayer. And uh, that's kind of where we left off last week. 
and uh, just and then we kind of shared our heart for the vision of, of our praying where we're heading with that praying out the you know the things God showed us in the past and uh, seeing that come to pass so we just want to give you um go over more scriptures on prayer tonight kind of laying the foundation for some things here with this and uh, if you will go with me to Acts chapter 4 Acts chapter 4 and for those of you, you know, uh, just a little side thought here. Um, the book of Acts is what man called this book. This book was not called the, uh, it was not titled the book of Acts. That's just ended up with it being a guy. And it actually got entitled the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Um, and really it's more, maybe more accurately, the book of the Acts of the Holy Ghost through the early church. Uh, the Holy Ghost working through the early church because it's apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers doing all kinds of things here, um, all anointed by the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. And uh, praise God. Acts chapter 4, verse 24. Um, the disciples have been uh, taken and beaten and charged um, by the council not to teach or preach anymore in the name of Jesus. Um, and let me say something, but, but the time that we're living in right now, um, one of the things that we can misinterpret or misconstrue is that if you've got faith and you walk in the power of God and you've got authority, that we're never going to face challenges. Well, the early church had faith. They had authority. They had power. Um, and yet persecution, great persecution came on the church so much so they were scattered abroad and everywhere they went they were persecuted uh, over and over and over and over again they were persecuted yet the church was strong the church grew the church got added to the church daily such as should be saved um, and so we cannot get caught up in living without any issues and thinking that that's how life's going to be um, for everybody, because we're living in perilous times. No, you're not that in the last days, perilous times will come. And um, we're not going to be able to confess that away. The Bible's already told you that they were coming. You can't confess away what the Bible told you is coming. Can't do it. The Antichrist, the, the, the Antichrist system and the beast will rise. You can't stop that from happening. It's going to happen. Okay? Um, so, we can't use our faith for things the Bible doesn't promise us. Now, we can use our faith to live victorious in the midst of it. We can use our faith that um, we, we, we walk uh, in, in power and authority over it, that we are deliver many of the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Um, we can use our faith that you know we're going to win people to Jesus, Amen. They were going to be anointed to share the gospel and praise the Lord. <clears throat> and uh, and that's here in this particular chapter. They've been persecuted, have been beaten, charged. And um, verse 23 says, and being let go, they went to their own company. And lifted up their voice to God with one accord. So they went to the Lord in prayer. Now they were just got told, it'd be like the government coming saying, you can't preach the Bible. And you can't share Jesus. That's what they were just told. And they said, Lord, thou art God, which has made heaven and earth and the sea and all that are in them, who by the mouth of thy servant David, um, I, I, I kind of skipped right over what I was trying to read. And being let go, they went to their own company and reported all that the chief priests and elders uh, had um said unto them. And when they heard that, they lifted up their voice to God. Now, they heard they were beaten. They heard that they were told they can't teach or preach in Jesus' name. And they went to their own company and uh, said, Lord, behold, thou art God. Thou hast made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is beneath uh, and all that is in them. Who by the mouth of thy servant David has said, why did the heathen rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth stood up, and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For of a truth against thy holy child Jesus, whom thou hast anointed, 
both Herod and Pontius Pilate. I start to say Pontius Pilate. Pontius Pilate, <laughs> with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, were gathered together. For to do whatsoever thy hand and thy counsel determined before to be done. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings. And grant unto thy servants that with all boldness that they may speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done by the name of thy holy child, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they began to speak the word of God with boldness. And the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and soul. Neither said any of them they had all things that they possessed was his own. But they had all things and in common. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Now, here it is, the church turning to the Lord in the midst of persecution, purely 100% religious persecution. And they turn to the Lord, ask for more boldness to speak, get work miracles, anoint us to go out and do the work, uh, send us forth, let us go get the job done. Praise the Lord. And the miracles and signs and wonders were taking place. Hallelujah. Glory, uh, can you say amen? And, you know, there was great grace upon them. Amen. Power was going. And so, but this took place because of prayer. We spent so much time in the past two to three years praying for the right man to be elected into the presidency. And I still don't believe the right man is there. I'm just saying that we were praying for the right man to be elected. And, and maybe we should have been praying for boldness to preach. And that signs and wonders would be done in the name of the Holy Child Jesus. And that we were turning the hearts of men and women who would be the voters to God. Hallelujah. And that God would move on men's hearts in the church. Amen. Are you, are you here? Now, I don't have my phone over here. I don't have any, any feed going on, so I can't see if anybody's here. <laughs> I, can't see, I can't see the amens right now. Hallelujah. Um, that's that's my, kind of my link to the people is to get to see the amens going on. And so, anyway, so they had, I got a comment from the cheap seat over there. <clears throat> They were in the midst of political persecution, religious persecution, um, being told they couldn't preach. And yet, what did they do? They turned to the Lord in prayer and asked for more boldness to preach. That God would work miracles. Hallelujah. That God would do great things. And God gave great witness to their preaching. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. And so as we um, move into this, um, not a season of uh, forgive them their sins and heal their land. It's amazing sometimes how we can miss. And I'm going to listen. When I say we, I mean me. I'm right smack dab in the middle of it. We can get caught up with praying for this man and this party and these people to be in position instead of humbling ourselves, repenting of our sins, turning from our wicked ways, and then trusting God to do what? He will hear from heaven. He will forgive our sins. He will heal our land. Glory to God. I said glory to God. If we spent the next two years and the subsequent two years after that praying along these lines and stop trying to pray out your personal wants, but pray out the will of God. And well, 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 how do you know what the will of God is? Well, I know I got scripture that says pray a certain way. 
and pray that out. Now, you can go before the Lord. Now, Lord, you know, uh, but too much was said in the past year that was really people's own opinion. And they prophesied, quote, prophesied it. And, we, and, and it led us astray because we weren't praying to be humbled. We weren't praying to forgive us our sin. You know, we weren't praying, hello, along these lines. My people which come by and shall humble themselves and seek my face. Seek his face. Seek his will. Seek his purpose. Hello? For, uh, repent of their sins. Turn from their wicked ways. Turn from their wicked ways. We can't have the church getting somebody in office that they like and thinking, well, we got it done, and then they go back and just live how they want to live. That's not effective. If we're going to be world changers, nation turner upside downers, that's a new one. Add that to the book of Ed Taylor's Neolog Neological Terminology. I didn't get any one response out of that. Come on. Did I get any of that in the uh, feed? Anybody clap like, like that one? I liked it. Ed Taylor's Neological um, Terminology. Okay. Turn the world upside downers. Praise the Lord. Going into prayer and believing God that we are asking for boldness to preach the gospel. Asking him to stretch forth his hand to heal in the name of Jesus. Being faithful to go out and share the gospel. But see, that boldness started with prayer. It started with prayer. Where they were seeking God and asking him for this for the purpose. They were praying for boldness and miracles so they could share the gospel. In the midst and under the, the um, demand that they shut up and that they don't preach, they did it anyway. And God even shook the building where they were. And I, and look, growing up Pentecost, I've seen people shake. I have not seen the building shake. Glory to God. That would be cool. And don't you go home praying for the building to shake. All right? You might get a devil or an earthquake. Or both. Did anybody laugh? <laughs> I, I can't see my feet. I can't see what's going on. Uh, we'll just start in verse 1. And in those days when the number of disciples were multiplied, there arose a murmuring among the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration or daily, um, they were passing out food and stuff like that. And the twelve called the multitude of the disciples together unto them and said, it is not reason that we should lead the word of God and serve tables. In other words, Let's put that out of King Jimmy in the modern English. It doesn't make sense for us to quit uh, studying the Bible and preaching the word and go out here and serve tables. Okay? Wherefore, brethren, look you out among you seven men of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen. A man full of faith. And the Holy Ghost. And Philip. And Procurus. And Nicanor. And Timion. And Farminus. And Nicholas. A proselyte of Antioch. Whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed. And laid hands on them. And the word of God increased. And then the number of disciples multiplied in Jerusalem greatly, and there was a great company of priests were obedient to the faith. Even the priests were getting saved. But notice again, prayer involved here. They laid hands on them. 
They prayed over them. They were getting wisdom from heaven. What did the disciples say? We're going to give ourselves to prayer and the word. And so in giving themselves to prayer and the word, wisdom was flowing. Wisdom was flowing. I had a situation recently that um, in, in a, in a non-church situation where someone um, needed some wisdom on how to deal with a situation without making another person feel bad. And, uh, and I gave some counsel and, and recommended we, that it be handled in a certain way. And it, the person was like, wow, that's awesome. And it was, it was wisdom. God will give you wisdom in secular things. God will give you wisdom in how to deal with life. Hallelujah. And, um, and so glory to God. Here we go. We, we, um, we're in the church. We're praying. You see, we need wisdom in the church, folks. We need direction in the church. That's going to come by prayer. It's, you know, I, listen, I know the people rejoice when the righteous reign. Okay. I, I understand that. And they do. There is, there is, there's joy when righteous people reign. But it doesn't say lie down and quit when they don't. Hello? Or throw your hands up and say it's all over. We've got a job to do. And as in the natural, uh, you might say it's so depressing, it's so it's such a, a Debbie Downer. Hello? I don't know why they use Debbie. I guess they could have used a Donald Downer. Let's just be PC here. A Debbie or a Donald Downer. Where is my crowd tonight? They're troubleshooting. Okay. I'm getting no support anywhere. They're all busy. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Somebody just sent something across there. All right. Hallelujah. And so, you know, there's a Debbie Downer. Things, things are horrible. You just can't, you can't think. And that is a result of not getting wisdom from God. When you get wisdom from God and you get answers from heaven, even when stuff happens, you already know what to do. And even when things go away, you don't want them to go. Hello? I am sure Paul never intended on getting locked up in the Ephesus jail. Hello? As a matter of fact, he stopped going over into the, um, the uh, southern regions of uh, Asia Minor, into the Galatian region, to go to Ephesus because he saw in a dream a man saying unto him, come over unto us. Well, he goes over there and starts preaching a sermon. And uh, the people run out in the city because they worship Diana there. And they're all mad. And they start saying, great is Diana, the, you know, the goddess of the Ephesians and all this stuff. And, you know, and the people who made the, the little um, Diana do, um, uh, idols were bad because their, their livelihood was going to be taken away if they, people stopped worshiping it. And so, and so they took him, took him and threw him in jail. Paul Barnabas got thrown in jail. Now they were beat and thrown in jail. That ain't exactly, I, I got to think, man, we had a vision. God showed us going into Ephesus. Come over unto us. We got things. Man, there's going to be. We got supernaturally stopped from going into another part of the world. To go to the. You got to know we're going to have us a revival. And instead, you's whooped and thrown in jail. Hello? Yet, the Bible says at midnight, they prayed and sang praises to God. And the jail shook, and the bands were loose, and the doors opened up. And the jailer came running in, um, got up, and was getting ready to kill himself. And Paul cried out and said, Do yourself no harm, we are still here. Please tell me I just didn't get my story mixed up with Peter. <laughs> Paul and Silas. Paul and Silas. It's Paul and Silas, not Bar I said Barnabas. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's Paul and Silas. I said Barnabas. I knew, I knew something was right, right. I messed, I messed, I messed that up. 
Okay. And um, he came in, and they start, they minister to him and get the man saved. What must I do to be saved? And Paul said, you know, gives the instructions, and the whole house got saved. And they got, they started, listen now, when it didn't go the way they thought it would go, they still prayed and sought the Lord. And because of that not getting turned the wrong way because it didn't go the way they thought it was going, and they stayed in prayer and praised towards God, that, if, that uh, Ephesian jailer got saved, but Paul established a ministry base in Ephesus. And came through and kept coming back through Ephesus and preaching that whole region from that place where he had gotten beat and things didn't go the way he thought they were going. Should have gone. Now you can argue till your tur you. was stolen or fraudulent uh, I do believe we we know there was definitely fraud to what the scale was we don't know but regardless of that here's the thing we got so many people who were so sure that, that Donald Trump was going to be in office even after you know uh, he lost even after the election was certified and all this stuff that now you got people who are just who are just don't even know what to do and they're out of track they're out of sorts they're out of they're out of rhythm spiritually. And what we've got to do is we've got to turn like Paul, and even with our backs bleeding, thrown in jail in shackles. And I can't you imagine Silas looking over at Paul and asking him how much pizza you had the night you saw the man say come up. Over unto us, because that had to have been an indigested dream, Paul. Because you know, when you told me a man said, "Come over unto us," I knew we were having us a revival, and we're in jail. This ain't no revival, Paul. We could have been up there in Asia Minor preaching without being in jail, but instead they prayed and they sang praises. God moved. The Ephesian jailer got saved and a ministry oh, me. or oh me, oh me or help me Jesus or amen. <laughs> if we will revert to the things that we know. Remember we read from um, uh, 2 Timothy the other week and um, where Paul says and, and, write, and remember Timothy's a young pastor. He's, he's one of Paul's protégés. He'd been brought up under Paul's ministry. And, and Paul writes what we refer to as, as, as it's one of the pastoral epistles. Um, and um, 2 Timothy. And in the Lord, he's brought up and nurtured for ministry and turned him over to a church. And he's preaching, he's pastoring. And Paul writes. The, uh, first and second Timothy to his, his his son in the Lord. And he goes, this know also that in the last days. Amen. Hallelujah. Perilous times shall come. Then we're not going to read all this. But he goes down in verse 12 and says, Yea, and all they that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men shall, uh, and seducers shall work so wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue vow in the things thou hast learned. Now, Paul is talking from experience here. Paul is writing this to his son in the Lord. When I was locked. Uh, and praised, I continued 
and the things that I knew. And God moved and God shook that jail and the doors opened and our, uh, the shackles fell off. But we were so caught up worshiping God, we didn't even get up and run out. And now today, so I'm, I'm ad-libbing here, but this is, you know, you got to understand when he's writing this to him, he has all this experience. And he's, when he's writing, continue thou in the things you've learned, he's writing from a place of, I'm not just rehearsing a message I heard Dad Hagen preach or Copeland preach. I'm talking to you from a place I walked in. And by walking in that place, I can tell you perilous times are coming, but you continue in the things you've learned. Glory to God. Church, we return to prayer. We return to our purposes. We return to doing things. And um, yeah, but what about, what about? Forget about the whatabouts. Well, so-and-so prophesied. Well, go stick it on the shelf. And leave it alone. Hello? Leave it alone. Was it prophesied and then misinterpreted? Was it they spoke something out of their own desires, their own wishes, and it really wasn't prophecy? Yeah, but I know them. They're, they, listen, go, go read Dad's stuff, Dad Hagen's stuff. When he talks about the Holy Ghost and prophecy and these kind of things, he talks about you know, telling people, you know, let me know. Now, if I miss it, you tell me, because I can miss it. I'm, a, I'm an imperfect vessel. And we're human. We can miss it. Think we're doing the right thing. Think we got it right. And miss it. And God will deal with you. And God will straighten you out. If you listen. And if you're going to be honorary and hard-headed, he, he can't straighten you out. Hello. But if, if maybe it was a misinterpretation. Maybe we didn't see the whole. Maybe we, you know, we, we, we see in part and we, what? Know in part. But when that which is perfect has come, we shall know even as we're known. Prophecy is not the full, is not the whole. Sometimes there's more to come later. Sometimes the way you interpret it had nothing to do with the way, what was being said at all. Sometimes there's delays in its manifestation. Hello? So what do I do? I pray. And I sing praises, I stay in the word, I seek the Lord, I stay close to him, and I leave that in his hand. Hello. Y'all here, you're going home. Um, well, we are home. Uh, <laughs> and y'all are home too, I guess. You know, um, I've shared over the years how my journey to um, go to the Orient to preach took took so many turns and so many things and uh, there was so much involved in it um, that when I first got saved in 1979 I got filled with the Holy Ghost uh, I knew I knew I knew God spoke to me and told me I'd go to the Orient to preach I knew it absolutely 100% now it was Orient but I kept I would always say China well I added to it world the orient and um you know through a, through a huge now let me say this that was so real to me i thought i was packing my bags in two weeks and was going to be on an airplane didn't know how didn't know when 
had no way, had no, didn't have a passport, didn't have the money. I mean, but I knew, man, I am out of here before I can hardly turn around. I'm going to preach for Jesus. Well, thank God I didn't go back then. I would have blown the country up. I had to know my head from a hole in the ground. And I could prove it to you. <laughs> Hallelujah. And I did many times ask my wife or girlfriend at the time. She'd walk off and leave me digging a hole <laughs> and burying myself in it. She'd just go get in the car. <laughs> but, as, but God spoke to me. I, I knew I was going to go preach in the Orient in 1979. Well, you know, 1980, I left for, for Oklahoma to go to Bible school at Ramah in, uh, in Broken Arrow, suburb of Tulsa. Graduated, um, came back, went to work in a church in Greenville. Um, just, just going to the church. I worked a regular job, went to work in the church, uh, volunteer, eventually went on staff, um, you know, uh, for there, I was only there about a year on staff full time. Um, but had been there in the church for four years prior to that working volunteer. And, um, you know, we, we had gone on a mission trip to, um, Dominican Republic, uh, about my fourth year at the church. And, um, and over time, this, this call to the Orient or that I was going to go to the Orient and preach waned. It wasn't up front anymore. Almost seemed like it wasn't real. Now, I got to remember when I first heard that, when I first got saved back in 79, man, I, like I said, I thought I was leaving next week. I mean, you, if you'd asked me, I told you, man, I got, I got to go pack my bags. I'm out of here. So now we're, we're, you know, 79, we're in the eighties, you know, mid eighties. Hadn't gotten there. Um, Jesse's born. So I've gone on one mission trip to, you know, the Dominican Republic. We went down to Santo Domingo, went up to Barona and, uh, and, and the coast, uh, the northwest coast of the Dominican Republic, which was next to the southeast coast of um, Haiti. Didn't go to the border, but we, we were close. And um, on my first mission trip. Then um, in the next year or so, the opportunity arose that we were um, offered an opportunity to go um, with a lovely couple uh, to um, Mexico City, Mexico, um, with the Pentecostal Holiness Church and spearhead a um, church plant team with them. And we had prayed about it and prayed about it. And, and, and eventually we didn't go. The Lord really revealed at, at, at a period of time of prayer, we committed to go and all this. We're raising the money to go that uh, he didn't want us to go. He just wanted us to be willing to go. And that, that was a big relief to my wife, but it was another one of those things for me. Well, you know, we're here. That China thing was back here, but now it's been Dominican. It's been Mexico. Mexico didn't, it didn't work out. And um, now they went down and did a great job and then ended up in um, Haiti for a number of years and um, did wonderful things there. Um, and then, not long after that, a couple of years, a year and a half later or so, we ended up in Greensboro pastoring a church. Now, when I was at Ray, my brother, hey, used to talk about Mark Brzee and Tony Cook and, um, and Doug Jones. And, uh, well, actually, he did talk about Tony Cook when I was there because Tony Cook was a classmate. But Doug Jones and um, Mark Brzee. And our first year here in Greensboro, uh, pastor called me up and said, look, I got, I got Mark Brzee coming in. We're only going to have him on Sunday, but he wants to do more than just one church while he's in the area. Would you be willing to have him? I said, yeah, we took him uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday night. And over the next two or three, four years, we had him come in five more times. Um, tremendous blessing to our church, love their ministry, uh, blessing to us. And then he started doing Bible schools overseas. First two were, um, Fallen Sweden and Tallinn, Estonia. The, um, the nation of Estonia had just seceded from the Soviet Union. And um, he asked us to go, or me to go, and I went. This is, this is, I mean, Western Europe and Eastern Europe is anywhere but the Orient. Okay? It just ain't. 
It ain't the same. It's nothing, nothing, nothing similar. And over the next few years, I went um, and ministered in Estonia more than once. Uh, Sweden, the Czech Republic, England, Spain, um, uh, Germany, uh, France. Hallelujah. I'm trying to think if I covered all the countries that we did when, in, in those areas that we preached in. And we, we traveled all over Western Europe and stuff, but I, I ministered and taught in those countries. So England, Sweden, um, France, Germany, Estonia, Italy, the Czech Republic. Okay, so we did seven countries over the next five years or so uh, going and ministering. Still not the Orient. And then we're into the mid, <laughs> we're into the mid 90s, um, doing missions trips, serving the Lord. But God spoke to me a word that was so strong when he first spoke to me. But you know where it is now? It's way back on that back burner. Just sitting there. Heat's down on hold. Not even thinking about it. Just praying and doing the things I know to do. Spend the time with the Lord. Being faithful to God. And in the um, summer of um, oh, 1998, we were getting Mark Brzee's monthly magazine newsletter thing. And he shared as he was flying home. They were flying home from Europe. They were going east instead of west. Um, the flight was cheaper. And sometimes it is. It's cheaper to come go east than it is go west from Europe. Um, it's, if you go through Europe, it costs more money. But he was flying home. They, they, for some reason, they were, going, they were going east. And they're looking at the plane. He's looking at the map in the, in the uh, magazine. You know, airplanes have the maps of the world where they, they land and all that stuff. And the Lord spoke to him and said, that what you've done in Europe will work in the Orient also. And I'm reading the article, you know, where he said the Lord started talking to him and beginning to talk to him about um, that he's going to start Bible schools in Europe just like he did in Europe. And, um, and I just, I was by myself and I started jumping up and down going, that's it, that's it, that's it. I knew, I knew at that moment that what God said to me in 1979, here was the door. And the, and I've given you a super, super condensed version to, right here. But all the things that took place between 1979 and I stepped off that airplane, uh, Northwest Airlines, onto the tarmac in Bangkok, Thailand to preach the gospel in 1999, 20 years later. 20 years. It was on fire in 79. I didn't even, even see the flame by 89. Heck, I almost forgot about it. Actually, there were times I thought I missed it. Ah, uh, you just missed that. That was just excitement. And, and I just kind of let it go. But then God stirred it back up. And that word came alive. And I flew in, uh, flew in there and landed. We had to get out of the tarmac. We didn't have the, the ramp, the tunnel things. Just got out of the tarmac in Bangkok, Thailand. And tears came down my cheeks. At the faithfulness of God to his word. And although it did not happen in anything like I thought it would have happened, it happened. And so let's learn to keep doing the things we know to do when things don't turn out the way we thought they were going to. The way that we interpreted a prophecy or a word from the Lord. Let's keep doing the things we know to do and leave that there. And if it's God, he'll, he does how to get it. He knows how to bring it to pass. You ain't got to make it. Amen. Well, we got we got we got a part to play. Yes, you do. Continue to do the things you've learned. That's what you do. 
You pray. You stay in the word. You keep sharing the gospel. And you let him take care of all the details. Hallelujah. You let him take care of the stuff. Amen. So uh, praise the Lord. It's, uh, it's time to quit. Hallelujah. Hey, um, glad to have you. Hey, Jeff, man, good to, good to have you with us. Hallelujah. Um, I need to call you and talk to you, man. Praise the Lord. Um, gonna be down, hopefully I'm going to be down in Greenville sometime, so I need, we need to get together. Hallelujah. Um, but let's keep doing the things we know to do. Keep doing the right things. Keep praying. Keep praising. Keep staying in the word. And leave people alone about what they put on Facebook. Hello. You are not the prophecy police. Hello. And you are not the correct the minister police. Amen. You let God take care of his house. Take care of your own. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's just a reference to things we've seen on Facebook since the election, especially in the past couple of weeks. Um, if we would just go back to continuing in the things we've learned, we'd be better off. Hallelujah. So next Tuesday, we'll begin our prayer service. Next Wednesday, we'll be back here on uh, Facebook Live. We'll continue with prayer, going over more scriptures. Uh, Sunday, uh, join us on Sunday at 1230. Uh, for our service time then. And um, we, you know, just know we love you. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next time here at Faith and Victory Church.